Welcome back. This is Sadiq, and you are watching, Sadiq Solitude. Today we are drawing the legendary, the one and only Jackie Chan care to join me. Jackie Chan is a Hong Kong actor, filmmaker, martial artist, and stuntman known for his slapstick acrobatic fighting style, comic timing, and innovative stunts, which he typically performs himself. Chan has been acting since the 1960s, performing in more than 150 films. He is one of the most popular action film stars of all time. Chan is one of the most recognizable and influential film personalities in the world, with a widespread global following in both the Eastern and Western hemispheres. He has received fame stars on the Hong Kong Avenue of Stars and the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Chan has been referenced in various pop songs, cartoons, films, and video games. He is an operatically trained vocalist and is also a canto pop and mandapop star, having released a number of music albums and sung many of the theme songs for the films in which he has starred. He is also a globally known philanthropist and has been named one of the top 10 most charitable celebrities by Forbes magazine. In 2004, film scholar Andrew Willis stated that Chan was perhaps the most recognized film star in the world. In 2015, Forbes estimated his net worth to be $350 million, and as of 2016, he was the second highest paid actor in the world. Chan's views on Hong Kong politics have gradually shifted from a pro democratic stance in the 1990s to a pro Beijing stance since the 2010s. Since 2013, Chan has been a pro Chinese Communist Party CPC, politician, having served two terms as a delegate to the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, and, in 2021, expressing his desire to join the CPC. Early Life Chan was born on April 7, 1954 in British Hong Kong as Chan Kong Sang. Chan the Hong Kong born to Charles and Li Li Chan, political refugees from the Chinese Civil War. In circa 1937, Chan's father, originally named Fong Dao Long, briefly worked as a secret agent for Lt. Gen. Dai Li, the chief spy in Kuomintang-ruled China. For fear of being arrested by the communist government, Chan's father fled to British Hong Kong in the 1940s and changed his surname from Fong to Chan Chan was his wife Chan Li Li's surname. Chan discovered his father's identity and changed his Chinese name to Fong Shi Long in the late 1990s, the name he would have been named according to his kin's genealogy book. Chan spent his formative years within the grounds of the French consul's residence in the Victoria Peak, British Hong Kong, as his father worked as a cook there. Chan attended the Nawa Primary School on Hong Kong Island, where he failed his first year, after which his parents withdrew him from the school. In 1960, his father emigrated to Canberra, Australia to work as the head cook for the American Embassy, and Chan was sent to the China Drama Academy, a Peking opera school run by Master Yu Jim Yuan. Chan trained rigorously for the next decade, excelling in martial arts and acrobatics. He eventually became part of the Seven Little Fortunes, a performance group made up of the school's best students, gaining the stage name Yuan Lo in homage to his master. Chan became close friends with fellow group members Sammo Hung and Yuan Biao, and the three of them later became known as the Three Brothers or Three Dragons. After entering the film industry, Chan along with Sammo Hung got the opportunity to train in Hapkido under the Grandmaster Jean Pao Kim, and Chan eventually attained a black belt. Chan joined his parents in Canberra, Australia in 1971, where he briefly attended Dixon College and worked as a construction worker. A fellow builder named Jack took Chan under his wing, thus earning Chan the nickname of Little Jack, later shortened to Jackie, which has stuck with him ever since. Film Career 1962-1975, Early Small Appearances He began his film career by appearing in small roles at the age of five as a child actor. At age eight, he appeared with some of his fellow Little Fortunes in the film Big and Little Wong Tin Bar, 1962, with Li Li Hua playing his mother. The following year, the young actor appeared in extras of Yen Chun's 1964 film Liang Shanpa and Chewing Tai and had a small role in King Hu's 1966 film Come Drink With Me. In 1971, after an appearance as an extra in another Kung Fu film, A Touch of Zen, Chan was signed to Chu Mu's Great Earth Film Company. Chan appeared in the Bruce Lee film Fist of Fury, 1972, both as an extra and as a stunt double for the Japanese villain Hiroshi Suzuki, portrayed by Riki Hashimoto, 
particularly during the final fight scene where Lee kicks him and he flies through the air. Chan again appeared in another Bruce Lee film, Enter the Dragon, 1973, as a minor henchman who gets killed by Lee's character. Sammo Hung helped Chan get minor roles in both of the Bruce Lee films. Chan also worked as a martial arts choreographer for John Woo's The Young Dragons, 1974. 1976 to 1980, startup leading roles. In 1976, Jackie Chan received a telegram from Willie Chan, a film producer in the Hong Kong film industry who had been impressed with Jackie's stunt choreography work. Willie Chan offered him an acting role in a film directed by Lo Wei. Lo saw Chan's performance in the John Woo film Hand of Death, 1976, and planned to model him after Bruce Lee with the film New Fist of Fury. His stage name was changed to Sing Lung, literally, becoming the dragon, Sing Four Lung Four in Jiaping or rarely as Ching Long in Pinyin, to emphasize his similarity to Bruce Lee, whose stage name meant, Lee the Little Dragon, in Chinese. Note that, dragon, in Lee's name referred to Lee's birth year being the dragon zodiac, not the Chinese dragon. The film was unsuccessful because Chan was not accustomed to Lee's martial arts style. Despite the film's failure, Lo Wei continued producing films with similar themes, but with little improvement at the box office. Chan's first major breakthrough was the 1978 film Snake in the Eagle's Shadow, shot while he was loaned to Seasonal Film Corporation under a two-picture deal. Director Yuan Wuping allowed Chan complete freedom over his stunt work. The film established the comedic kung fu genre, and proved refreshing to the Hong Kong audience. The same year, Chan then starred in Drunken Master, which finally propelled him to mainstream success. Upon Chan's return to Lo Wei's studio, Lo tried to replicate the comedic approach of Drunken Master, producing and also showed new features at the time with Jackie as the stunt director half a loaf of kung fu and spiritual kung fu. He also gave Chan the opportunity to make his directorial debut in The Fearless Hyena. When Willie Chan left the company, he advised Jackie to decide for himself whether or not to stay with Lo Wei. During the shooting of Fearless Hyena Part 2, Chan broke his contract and joined Golden Harvest, prompting Lo to blackmail Chan with triads, blaming Willie for his star's departure. The dispute was resolved with the help of fellow actor and director Jimmy Wang Yu, allowing Chan to stay with Golden Harvest. 1980-1987, commercial success in the action comedy genre. Willie Chan became Jackie's personal manager and firm friend, and remained so for over 30 years. He was instrumental in launching Chan's international career, beginning with his first forays into the American film industry in the 1980s. His first Hollywood film was The Big Brawl in 1980. Chan then played a minor role in the 1981 film The Cannonball Run, which grossed over 100 million US dollars worldwide. Despite being largely ignored by North American audiences in favor of established American actors such as Burt Reynolds, Chan was impressed by the outtakes shown at the closing credits, inspiring him to include the same device in his future films. After the commercial failure of The Protector in 1985, Chan temporarily abandoned his attempts to break into the US market, returning his focus to Hong Kong films. Back in Hong Kong, Chan's films began to reach a larger audience in East Asia, with early successes in the lucrative Japanese market including Drunken Master, The Young Master, 1980, and Dragon Lord, 1982. The Young Master went on to beat previous box office records set by Bruce Lee and established Chan as Hong Kong cinema's top star. With Dragon Lord, he began experimenting with elaborate stunt action sequences, including the final fight scene where he performs various stunts, including one where he does a backflip off a loft and falls to the lower ground. Chan produced a number of action comedy films with his opera school friends Sammo Hung and Yuan Biao. The three co-starred together for the first time in 1983 in Project A, which introduced a dangerous stunt-driven style of martial arts that won it the Best Action Design Award at the third annual Hong Kong Film Awards. Over the following two years, the, the Three Brothers appeared in Wheels on Meals and the original Lucky Stars trilogy. In 1985, Chan made the first police story film, a crime action film in which Chan performed a number of dangerous stunts. It won Best Film at the 1986 Hong Kong Film Awards. In 1986, Chan played Asian Hawk, an Indiana Jones-esque character, in the film Armor of God. The film was Chan's biggest domestic box office success up to that point, grossing over 35 million Hong Kong dollars. 1988 to 1998, acclaimed film sequels and Hollywood breakthrough. In 1988, Chan starred alongside Sammo Hung and Yuan Biao for the last time to date in the film Dragons Forever. Hung co-directed with Corey Yuan, and the villain in the film was played by Yuan Hua, both of whom were fellow graduates of the China Drama Academy. 
In the late 1980s and early 1990s, Chan starred in a number of successful sequels beginning with Project A Part 2 and Police Story 2, which won the award for Best Action Choreography at the 1989 Hong Kong Film Awards. This was followed by Armor of God 2, Operation Condor, and Police Story 3, Super Cop, for which Chan won the Best Actor Award at the 1993 Golden Horse Film Festival. In 1994, Chan reprised his role as Wong Fei Hung in Drunken Master 2, which was listed in Time Magazine's All Time 100 Movies. Another sequel, Police Story 4, First Strike, brought more awards and domestic box office success for Chan, but did not fare as well in foreign markets. By the mid-1990s, he was the most popular action movie star in Asia and Europe. Up until January 1995, his films had grossed over 500 million Hong Kong dollars, 70 million US dollars, in Hong Kong and 39 billion yen, 415 million US dollars, in Japan, while having sold over 33 million box office admissions in France, Germany, Italy and Spain up until then. Despite his international success, he was not very successful in North America, where he had only two wide releases as a leading actor, The Big Brawl and The Protector, grossing 9.51 million US dollars, 32 million US dollars adjusted for inflation. Despite this, there was a thriving North American home video market for Chan's Hong Kong films by the mid-1990s. Chan rekindled his Hollywood ambitions in the 1990s, but refused early offers to play villains in Hollywood films to avoid being typecast in future roles. For example, Sylvester Stallone offered him the role of Simon Phoenix, a criminal in the futuristic film Demolition Man Chan declined and the role was taken by Wesley Snipes. Chan finally succeeded in establishing a foothold in the North American market in 1995 with a worldwide release of Rumble in the Bronx, attaining a cult following in the United States that was rare for Hong Kong movie stars. The success of Rumble in the Bronx led to a 1996 release of Police Story 3, Super Cop in the United States under the title Super Cop, which grossed a total of US dollars Chan's first huge blockbuster success came when he co-starred with Chris Tucker in the 1998 buddy cop action comedy Rush Hour, grossing US US$130 million in the United States alone. This film made him a Hollywood star, after which he wrote his autobiography in collaboration with Jeff Young entitled I Am Jackie Chan. 1999-2007, Fame in Hollywood and Dramatization In 1998, Chan released his final film for Golden Harvest, Who Am I? After leaving Golden Harvest in 1999, he produced and starred alongside Xu Qi in Gorgeous, a romantic comedy that focused on personal relationships and featured only a few martial arts sequences. Although Chan had left Golden Harvest in 1999, the company continued to produce and distribute for two of his films, Gorgeous, 1999, and The Accidental Spy, 2001. Chan then helped create a PlayStation game in 2000 called Jackie Chan Stuntmaster, to which he lent his voice and performed the motion capture. He continued his Hollywood success in 2000 when he teamed up with Owen Wilson in the Western action comedy Shanghai Noon. A sequel, Shanghai Nights followed in 2003 and also featured his first on-screen fight scene with Donnie Yen. He reunited with Chris Tucker for Rush Hour 2, 2001, which was an even bigger success than the original, grossing $347 million worldwide. Chan experimented with the use of special effects and wirework for the fight scenes in his next two Hollywood films, The Tuxedo, 2002, and The Medallion, 2003, which were not as successful critically or commercially. In 2004, he teamed up with Steve Coogan in Around the World in 80 Days, loosely based on Jules Verne's novel of the same name. In 2004, Film scholar Andrew Willis stated that Chan was, perhaps, the most recognized star in the world. Despite the success of the Rush Hour and Shanghai Noon films, Chan became frustrated with Hollywood over the limited range of roles and lack of control over the filmmaking process. In response to Golden Harvest's withdrawal from the film industry in 2003, Chan started his own film production company, JCE Movies Limited, Jackie Chan Emperor Movies Limited, in association with Emperor Multimedia Group, EMG. His films have since featured an increasing number of dramatic scenes while continuing to succeed at the box office, examples include New Police Story, 2004, The Myth, 2005, and the hit film Rob B. Hood, 2006. Chan's next release was the third installment in the Rush Hour film series directed by Brett Ratner, Rush Hour 3 in August 2007. It grossed $255 million US dollars. However, it was a disappointment in Hong Kong, grossing only 3.5 million Hong Kong dollars during its opening weekend. 2008-present, new experiments and change in acting style. 
Filming of The Forbidden Kingdom, Chan's first on-screen collaboration with fellow Chinese actor Jet Li, was completed on August 24, 2007 and the movie was released in April 2008. The movie featured heavy use of effects and wires. Chan voiced Master Monkey in Kung Fu Panda, released in June 2008, appearing with Jack Black, Dustin Hoffman, and Angelina Jolie. In addition, he has assisted Anthony Cito in an advisory capacity for the writer-director's film Wushu, released on May 1, 2008. The film stars Sammo Hung and Wang Wenjia as father and son. In November 2007, Chan began filming Shinjuku Incident, a dramatic role featuring no martial arts sequences with director Derek Yi, which sees Chan take on the role of a Chinese immigrant in Japan. The film was released on April 2, 2009. According to his blog, Chan discussed his wishes to direct a film after completing Shinjuku Incident, something he has not done for a number of years. The film was expected to be the third in the Armor of God series, and had a working title of Armor of God 3, Chinese Zodiac. The film was released on December 12, 2012. Because the Screen Actors Guild did not go on strike, Chan started shooting his next Hollywood movie The Spy Next Door at the end of October in New Mexico. In The Spy Next Door, Chan plays an undercover agent whose cover is blown when he looks after the children of his girlfriend. In Little Big Soldier, Chan stars alongside Li Ham Wang as a soldier in the Warring States period in China. He is the lone survivor of his army and must bring a captured enemy soldier Li Ham Wang to the capital of his province. In 2010, he starred with Jaden Smith in The Karate Kid, a remake of the 1984 original. This was Chan's first dramatic American film. He plays Mr. Han, a kung fu master and maintenance man who teaches Jaden Smith's character kung fu so he can defend himself from school bullies. His role in The Karate Kid won him the Favorite Butt Kicker Award at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards in 2011. In Chan's next movie, Shaolin, he plays a supporting role as a cook of a temple instead of one of the major characters. His 100th movie, 1911, was released on September 26, 2011. Chan was the co-director, executive producer, and lead star of the movie. While Chan has directed over 10 films over his career, this was his first directorial work since Who Am I? In 1998. 1911 premiered in North America on October 14. While at the 2012 Cannes Film Festival, Chan announced that he was retiring from action films citing that he was getting too old for the genre. He later clarified that he would not be completely retiring from action films, but would be performing fewer stunts and taking care of his body more. In 2013, Chan starred in Police Story 2013, a reboot of the Police Story franchise directed by Ding Sheng, and it was released in China at the end of 2013. Chan's next film Dragon Blade was released in early 2015 and co-starred Hollywood actors John Cusack and Adrian Brody. In 2015, Chan was awarded the title of Dadak by Malaysia as he helped Malaysia to boost its tourism, especially in Kuala Lumpur where he previously shot his films. In early 2017, Chan's new film titled Kung Fu Yoga, a Chinese-Indian project, which also starred Disha Patani, Sonu Sood and Amira Daster, was released. The film reunited Chan with director Stanley Tong, who directed a number of Chan's films in the 1990s. Upon release, the film was a huge success at the box office, and became the fifth highest grossing film in China, one month after its release. In 2016, he teamed up with Johnny Knoxville and starred in his own production Skip Trace. Chan starred in the 2016 action comedy Railroad Tigers and the 2017 action thriller The Foreigner, an Anglo-Chinese production. He also stars in the science fiction film Bleeding Steel. He will appear in Project Extraction alongside John Cena. His films had collectively grossed 1.14 billion Hong Kong dollars, 147 million US dollars, at the Hong Kong box office up until 2010, over 72 million US dollars in South Korea between 1991 and 2010, and 48.4 billion yen, 607 million US dollars, in Japan up until 2012. In Europe, his films collectively sold about 84 million tickets between 1973 and 2010. As of 2021, his films have grossed over 14 billion renminbi, 2.17 billion US dollars, in China, and 1.84 billion US dollars, more than 2.44 billion US dollars adjusted for inflation, in the United States and Canada. As of 2018, 48 of his films have grossed more than 5 billion US dollars at the worldwide box office. Other works Music Chan and Qin Hailu singing in Shanghai, China in August 2006 
Chan had vocal lessons whilst at the Peking Opera School in his childhood. He began producing records professionally in the 1980s and has gone on to become a successful singer in Hong Kong and Asia. He has released 20 albums since 1984 and has performed vocals in Cantonese, Mandarin, Japanese, Taiwanese and English. He often sings the theme songs of his films, which play over the closing credits. Chan's first musical recording was, Kung Fu Fighting Man, the theme song played over the closing credits of The Young Master, 1980. At least 10 of these recordings have been released on soundtrack albums for the films. His Cantonese song, Story of a Hero, theme song of Police Story, was selected by the Royal Hong Kong Police and incorporated into their recruitment advertisement in 1994. Chan voiced the character of Shang in the Chinese release of the Walt Disney animated feature Mulan, 1998. He also performed the song, I'll Make a Man Out of You, for the film soundtrack. For the US release, the speaking voice was performed by B.D. Wong and the singing voice was done by Donny Osmond. He also collaborated with Ani DeFranco on Unforgettable. In 2007, Chan recorded and released, We Are Ready, the official one-year countdown song to the 2008 Summer Olympics which he performed at a ceremony marking the one-year countdown to the 2008 Summer Paralympics. Chan also released one of the two official Olympics albums, official album for the Beijing 2008 Olympic Games, Jackie Chan's version, which featured a number of special guest appearances. Chan performed Hard to Say Goodbye, along with Andy Lau, Lu Huan and Waken, Emil, Chow, at the 2008 Summer Olympics closing ceremony. Academia Chan received his honorary doctorate of social science degree in 1996 from the Hong Kong Baptist University. In 2009, he received another honorary doctorate from the University of Cambodia, and has also been awarded an honorary professorship by the Savannah College of Art and Design in Hong Kong in 2008. Chan is currently a faculty member of the School of Hotel and Tourism Management at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, where he teaches the subject of tourism management. As of 2015, he also serves as the Dean of the Jackie Chan Film and Television Academy under the Wuhan Institute of Design and Sciences. Personal Life in 1982, Chan married Joan Lin, a Taiwanese actress. Their son, singer and actor J.C. Chan, was born that same year. Chan had an extramarital affair with Elaine Ng Ilay and has a daughter Etta Ng Chok Lam by her, born on January 18, 1999. It turned into a scandal within the media. Although he reportedly gave Elaine 70,000 Hong Kong dollars dollars each month for her living expenses and 600,000 Hong Kong dollars dollars when she moved to Shanghai, the transactions were later claimed to be non-existent by her lawyer. Despite regretting the results of the affair, Chan said he had only committed a fault that many men in the world commit. During the incident, Elaine stated she would take care of her daughter without Chan. Chan speaks Cantonese, Mandarin, English, and American Sign Language and also speaks some German, Korean, Japanese, Spanish, and Thai. Chan is an avid football fan and supports the Hong Kong national football team, the England national football team, and Manchester City. He is a fan of the Italian duo Bud Spencer and Terence Hill, from whom he was inspired for his movies. Stunts and Screen Persona Chan has performed most of his own stunts throughout his film career, which are choreographed by the Jackie Chan stunt team. The team was established in 1983, and Chan has used them in all his subsequent films to make choreographing easier, given his understanding of each member's abilities. Chan and his team undertake many of the stunts performed by other characters in his films, shooting the scenes so that their faces are obscured. In the early 1980s, Jackie Chan began experimenting with elaborate stunt action sequences in films such as The Young Master, 1980, and especially Dragon Lord, 1982, which featured a pyramid fight scene that holds the record for the most takes required for a single scene with 2,900 takes, and the final fight scene where he performs various stunts, including one where he does a backflip off a loft and falls to the lower ground. In 1983, Project A saw the official formation of the Jackie Chan stunt team and added elaborate, dangerous stunts to the fights and typical slapstick humor. At one point, Chan falls from the top of a clock tower through a series of fabric canopies. Critics have compared his comedic stunts in Project A to Buster Keaton, who was also known to perform his own stunts, although Chan himself had not watched Keaton's films until years after Project A released. According to Chan, Project A was an evolution of the action stunt work he had been doing in earlier kung fu comedy films since The Young Master. Police Story, 1985, contained many large-scale action scenes, including an opening sequence featuring a car chase through a shanty town, 
Chan stopping a double-decker bus with his service revolver and a climactic fight scene in a shopping mall. This final scene earned the film the nickname, Glass Story, by the crew, due to the huge number of panes of sugar glass that were broken. During a stunt in this last scene, in which Chan slides down a pole from several stories up, the lights covering the pole had heated it considerably, resulting in Chan suffering second-degree burns, particularly to his hands, as well as a back injury and dislocation of his pelvis upon landing. Chan performed similarly elaborate stunts in numerous other films, such as several police story sequels, Project A Part II, The Armor of God series, Dragons Forever, Drunken Master II, Rumble in the Bronx, and the Rush Hour series, among others. The dangerous nature of his stunts makes it difficult to get insurance, especially in the United States where his stunt work is contractually limited. Chan holds the Guinness World Record for most stunts by a living actor, which emphasizes that no insurance company will underwrite Chan's productions in which he performs all his own stunts. Chan has been injured frequently when attempting stunts, many of them have been shown as outtakes or as bloopers during the closing credits of his films. He came closest to death filming Armor of God when he fell from a tree and fractured his skull. Over the years, he has dislocated his pelvis and also broken numerous parts of his body, including his fingers, toes, nose, both cheekbones, hips, sternum, neck, ankle, and ribs. Promotional materials for Rumble in the Bronx emphasized that he performed all of the stunts, and one version of the movie poster even diagrammed his many injuries. Jackie Chan at the 2013 Cannes Film Festival Chan created his screen persona as a response to the late Bruce Lee and the numerous imitators who appeared before and after Lee's death. Lee's characters were typically stern, morally upright heroes. In contrast, Chan plays well-meaning, slightly foolish regular men, often at the mercy of their friends, girlfriends, or families, who always triumph in the end despite the odds. Additionally, he has stated that he deliberately styles his movement to be the opposite of Lee's, where Lee held his arms wide, Chan holds his tight to the body, where Lee was loose and flowing, Chan is tight and choppy. Despite the success of the Rush Hour series, Chan has stated that he is not a fan of it since he neither appreciates the action scenes in the movie nor understands American humor. American filmmaker Quentin Tarantino classified Chan's style of acting and filmmaking as physical comedy, and considered him one of the greatest in the genre. British filmmaker Edgar Wright describes Jackie Chan as an expressive, visual performer with an everyman persona. He notes that, in contrast to other action heroes, such as Bruce Lee, Sylvester Stallone, Clint Eastwood or Arnold Schwarzenegger, Chan presents himself as a lovable, goofball underdog who overcomes the odds with almost superhuman acrobatic stunts and fighting abilities. In the 2000s, the aging Chan grew tired of being typecast as an action hero, prompting him to act with more emotion in his latest films. In New Police Story, he portrayed a character suffering from alcoholism and mourning his murdered colleagues. To further shed the image of a nice guy, Chan played an anti-hero for the first time in Rob B. Hood starring as Thongs, a burglar with gambling problems. In 2008, Chan met actor Vijay and discussed about his stunts in his films putting his life at risk. Chan plays a low-level gangster in 2009's Shinjuku Incident, a serious drama set in Tokyo about unsavory characters. Legacy Jackie Chan star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame Jackie Chan arriving for the press conference of the movie Little Big Soldier in 2010. Chan has received global recognition for his film acting and stunt work. His accolades include the Innovator Award from the American Choreography Awards and a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Taurus World Stunt Awards. He has stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and the Hong Kong Avenue of Stars. In addition, Chan has also been honored by placing his hand and footprints at Grauman's Chinese Theater. Despite considerable box office success in Asia, Chan's Hollywood films have been criticized with regard to their action choreography. Reviewers of Rush Hour 2, The Tuxedo, and Shanghai Nights noted the toning down of Chan's fighting scenes, citing less intensity compared to his earlier films. The comedic value of his films is questioned, some critics stating that they can be childish at times. Chan was awarded the Order of the British Empire, MBE, in 1989 and the Silver Bohemia Star, SBS, in 1999. When American filmmaker Quentin Tarantino presented Chan with the Lifetime Achievement Award at the 1995 MTV Movie Awards, Tarantino described Chan as one of the best filmmakers the world has ever known and one of the greatest physical comedians since sound came into film. Cultural Impact Film Industry Numerous films from around the world have taken inspiration from Jackie Chan's fight sequences and action choreography. Examples include The Matrix and Kill Bill, 
both choreographed by his former colleague Yuan Wuping, the Kung Fu Panda series, where he also voiced Monkey, The Raid, Redemption, 2011, from Indonesian cinema, Kingsman, The Secret Service, 2014, The John Wick series, Atomic Blonde, 2017, Marvel Cinematic Universe films such as Black Panther, 2018, and Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, 2021, the DC Extended Universe film Birds of Prey, 2020, and the Netflix film Extraction, 2020. British filmmaker Edgar Wright cited Chan as an influence and said that, no matter how many people try and rip off Jackie Chan movies, there's something which they can't rip off which is Jackie Chan himself. Tom Holland also cited Chan as an influence on several action scenes in Uncharted, 2022, noting Chan's use of his surroundings to fight people in unique ways. In popular culture and media. Chan has been the subject of Ash's song, Kung Fu, Heavy Vegetables, Jackie Chan is a punk rocker, Lee Ham Wong's Long Live Chinese People, as well as in Jackie Chan by Frank Chickens, and television shows Tim and Eric Awesome Show, Great Job, Celebrity Deathmatch and Family Guy. He has been cited as the inspiration for manga and anime such as Dragon Ball, which was particularly inspired by Drunken Master, and the fight scenes in Jackie Chan movies, the show pays homage with a character by the alias Jackie Chan. Toriyama said he had a young Jackie Chan in mind for a live-action Goku, stating that nobody could play Goku but him. Chan himself was a fan of the series, and had expressed some interest in adapting Dragon Ball into a live-action film, but said it would require a lot of amazing special effects and an enormous budget. The parkour movement was also inspired by Chan. A number of video games have been based on, or featured, Jackie Chan. His film Wheels on Meals, called Spartan X in Japan, spawned the hit 1984 beat M up arcade game Spartan X, released as Kung Fu Master in Western markets, and its sequel Spartan X2 for the Nintendo Famicom console. Spartan X laid the foundations for the beat M up genre, and inspired other games including Super Mario Bros., 1985, and Street Fighter, 1987. Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu was released in 1990 for the PC Engine and Nintendo Entertainment System. In 1995, Chan was featured in the arcade game Jackie Chan the Kung Fu Master. A series of Japanese video games were released on the MSX computer by Pony, based on several of Chan's films, Project A, Project A2, Police Story, The Protector and Wills on Meals. Other games based on Jackie Chan include Jackie Chan Stunt Master, Jackie Chan Adventures and Jackie Chan J-Mat Fitness. Chan also inspired video game characters such as Lei Wulong in Tekken and the fighting type Pokemon Hitmonchan. On June 25, 2013, Chan responded to a hoax Facebook page created a few days earlier that alleged he had died. He said that several people contacted him to congratulate him on his recent engagement, and soon thereafter contacted him again to ask if he was still alive. He posted a Facebook message, commenting, If I died, would probably tell the world. In 2015, a made-up word inspired by Chan's description of his hair during an interview for a commercial, Duang, became an internet viral meme particularly in China. The Chinese character for the word is a composite of two characters of Chan's name. What's your favorite Jackie Chan movies? Let us know. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and share. Until next time, take care, and do good.